because Manuel Ruka is from Chlorosphere and he's a trend hunter. So he's got his own trend consultancy based in France, but looking at everything globally. So as he's looking at growers, retailers, consumers, and trying to predict what will be the next big thing. And today in this presentation, you're gonna see everything from beekeeping through to terracotta as a color. So he's looking at the trends on every single level. If you've got any questions for Manuel, put them in the Q&A and we'll ask them at the very end of all three seminars today. So I will hand you over to Manuel. Thank you for joining us. Hello everyone. Thank you for being here at this amazing webinar. And I'm gonna show you a few trends about the upcoming season. So first of all, let me introduce myself. I'm Manuel Ricard for the Trends Consultancy at Clovosphere. And our company is a, a global uh, trends consultancy. And I'm gonna show you a few insights, few trends about the upcoming season, uh, about the what the consumer wants. But first of all, um, let me introduce the, the company. So Clovosphere is a global trends consultancy. So that means we uh, publish trend books, uh, mainly based on the horticulture, the plant, the landscape sectors uh, as well of the uh, for the retailer and uh, we work um, as a um, trans consultancy with a marketing expert with a stylist expert uh, we work um, everywhere in the world it can be uh, from uh, plant growers in Kenya it can be uh, from a big retail chain in the uh, USA for example we also used to work uh, in with uh, Japan and South Korea for the cut flower industry for example and this is very uh, exciting and very interesting to uh, to see what are the upcoming trends and i'm going to share with you a uh, few a uh, few insights so you all have uh, noticed that uh, the global industry have increased um, from 30 to 40 percent in the, the last two years due to the pandemic um, because people have spent more and more time in their home uh, they, they um, have more budget to do so because they don't travel anymore they don't go to cinemas to restaurants so they have put all their money into their home improvement into their garden for example uh, so it's very interesting for us because it's now a new uh, a new kind of uh, customer that is coming to our industry um, one of the big points to understand is that the, the, the global society have changed. Have changed a lot because uh, part of the population are now different from uh, what they used to be for the whole uh, garden center industry, for example. Because now the, um, the most numerous uh, population is, um, is uh, with the millennials. Uh, we have 40, 46% of the global population, of the active population, uh, who is um, uh, who is made with this uh, millennial generation, and uh, we have the other, the older generation, for example, the people over sixty, who are now maturist. So that means they they are not in growth anymore. They are not um, a strategical target for our business. It's still interesting, still important because they used to know our industry, they used to know our products, they used to know how to uh, plant uh, flowers and trees and shrubs in their gardens. But um, from a strategical point of view, it's better to consider now the younger generation. I will explain how and why. Because this younger generation uh, is uh, the most important in the global population. Here you can see few personas. So that means it's uh, like uh, marketing archetypes uh, we use in the in the marketing to target uh, all the all the strategy, all the all the businesses, and I'm gonna explain you a few uh, of these uh, profiles. For example, we have the millennials, so um, they represent 46% of the global population, as I, I told sooner, and they are very important because they are in progress. So that means this percentage will grow um, in the upcoming years. They are quite loyal towards their brands. They are educated. They have spent lots of time in the uh, universities in the uh, high school for example they are eco concern uh, which is very important and they have a desire and a budget towards our industries which is quite strategical 
the other generation, the X generation, it's between, they are between uh, 40 and 60. They still represent a huge amount of the consumers because they still represent 40% of the consumer, but they are in stagnation. So that means they will not grow anymore. They can be um, difficult to work with because they mainly focus on the prices. So it's not good for a business uh, to only work with consumer uh, only uh, focus on the the prices because they try to uh, to lower the price and uh, it's not uh, very strategical for a business. It's still a huge uh, mass, a very mass market um, as it's as its own, but uh, not maybe the most strategical one. And then we have uh, the maturists that represent fourteen percent of the global population. They are still very interesting, as I told you, but. Um, since they have a budget, uh, they only spend this budget to their own comfort and they don't have any more projects toward their own improvement or toward their gardens. So that means it's not quite strategical for our industry. So that means we have all those new kind of uh, persona. Um, few of them are very, uh, are very uh, little, like uh, Emily, for example, uh, that represents uh, only 3%, but it's very strategical and I'm going to show you how. And if we have a closer look uh, about what the consumer wants, uh, for example, here um, we have them um, after COVID, what do we want the most? First of all, this is very uh, important and, uh, and um, yeah, it's very important for our business that they want to spend time in nature. So that they want to uh, go outside to have a walk in the nature. They want to spend their holiday in the natural place. So this is very uh, important for, for us. But if you have a closer look on the fourth line of this chart, uh, that that is very uh, strategical because uh, the first um, uh, common thing they, they want to uh, to use is to um, improve their home and their garden. And if we have a closer look, especially on the younger generation, uh, the this percentage is even bigger because for millennials this represents. 64% of the global population of the millennials uh, who wants to spend more time and more budget toward the garden and the home improvement. So this is not um, a trend. This is a very global movement because it's uh, linked with a demographic movement. So this is quite interesting to, to observe. So the first thing to remember is that these young generation are more and more numerous in our markets and they have a sincere need for authenticity. This is very strategical. So what is the global context of the consumption? If we have um, a global uh, overview of the situation, we have to consider that until uh, 2025, we all have to face um, climate change and uh, environment uh, issues. So that's why companies um, are now um, putting taxes onto uh, the garbage we produce, onto um, the, the products we, uh, we use. So that means for the, the gardener, the, the consumer, they will be more focused about the impact uh, they could have on the global, uh, global climate, global uh, environment. So this is uh, quite interesting because for our industry, our industry is um, using lots of uh, plastic pots, for example, or plastic products. And uh, until 2025, we will have to face this new um, issues and to find solutions. The, all the solutions are not uh, founded yet, but we have to, uh, to face this, uh, these challenges. And there are challenges inside the consumer itself, because now the consumer is not um, either uh, in a comfort position or either in an ecological position, is uh, in between and he has to face his, his own choices. So that means for our industry, we have now five mega trends um, to consider. The first one is that the consumption is now full of paradoxes. So that means we have two generations, two very different generations, and they, freak, they they use the same stores. So we have uh, the younger generation uh, who wants to have very natural space, very uh, wild flowers, for example, and wild space, uh, even inside our gardens. 
And we have the older generation who wants to have very clean space, very um, uh, nice and tidy garden with uh, lots of uh, mineral uh, materials, for example, uh, very slow developing plants, uh, very uh, big um, big palm trees, for example, and uh, quite uh, quite uh, simple uh, varieties. So the lesson to learn is now to understand both of these uh, consumer and not to denigrate uh, one towards the other. It's very, uh, very difficult to do, but very important to understand. The second trend in the, is very uh, huge is that um, for the um, temperate climates, like in uh, Europe and in the United States, for example, uh, there is a, a seasonal adjustment. So that means, for example, in France, we used to have a very huge uh, um, garden season from April to uh, July, for example, and now it's quite usual to uh, have a big uh, big market between early January to late November, for example. So that means the, the season goes uh, wider and it's more interesting for the garden center, for example, or the DIY store, because they, they can now have um, a longer period to uh, express uh, what they have uh, bought and what they can offer to, to the consumer. So this expanding of the commercial season is quite uh, interesting to notice. The third mega trend is that now we have a lazy shopper, but with, uh, with money. So that means he will hire, for example, landscape contractor to, uh, to maintain uh, his garden, to clean uh, his, uh, his path, his terrace, for example, and the consumer use now more and more the robotic um, uh, tools like a, a garden lawnmower for example and so they spend budget into the, the robot lawnmower but uh, it's more time for them to spend in the garden so that means they delegate uh, this kind of task but they, they will have more time to spend in the garden uh, and to choose their plant, to plant uh, all the plants in the in the garden, for example. The fourth mega trend is that uh, now we have an eco concern in habitants. So that means he uses less consumable products. Uh, he uses uses less uh, uh, cheap wood, for example, uh, cheap uh, plastic products. But he now invests. Uh, onto uh, very um, stable, sustainable materials. Like for example, for the vegetable garden, he use uh, bricks, uh, clay bricks. Um, he use uh, precious wood for his terrace, for example. And now as a professional, we have to give him uh, inspiration and motivation to go in that uh, particular direction. And the last mega trend is that now uh, we have a predominant uh, natural style. So that means we used to have a urban style. That means for big retailers, they always um, display and broadcast uh, advert uh, about a urban uh, environment, uh, urban um, uh, display, urban landscape, uh, a city landscape, for example. Um, uh, which has been very inspiring for the consumer, but now uh, the countryside is more inspiring for the consumer because due to the pandemic and the lockdown, we we kind of uh, fed up with this uh, whole city uh, thing, and now people want to uh, um, to have uh, a freedom inside the, the countryside, inside the fields, for example. That's why this uh, this uh, uh, bucolic style is very important. When I speak of a bucolic style, it means that the consumer is in, in search of truth. So that means the, the simpler and more natural a product is, the more likely it is to appeal for both the retailer and the consumer. Genetic and hybridization work is obviously always possible, but on condition that the share of this wild uh, style of varieties in crop increases. So that means this can be seen, for example, in the nursery with the increase in demand of a slightly improved uh, forest variety, for example, and I'm going to show you a few, uh, few examples. But to understand this, uh, this point, we have to get a closer look to the consumer, for example, this one, Theo, that represents 40% uh, of uh, the whole market. 
is an urban uh, frustrated that mean uh, he lives in the city he has a, a job inside uh, the city center inside the in the downtown but um when always he, he, he can he, he he wants to spend his time inside the countryside so that means he have a family house somewhere he have a, his grandparents house somewhere in the country uh, and he wants to spend uh, a lot of time in the countryside because uh, he's quite fed up with uh, this uh, this city uh, environment and we have another uh, personnel who is very uh, important, who is Emily. And for example, Emily also wanted to spend time inside the country. So that's why uh, when she saw that she can uh, uh, use teleworking, she, uh, as soon as she knew it, she bought a very uh, big house in the countryside with a big garden. So she still um, she still represents three percent of the whole consumption, but she um, have a big um, big hopes towards our industry because yeah she have a very big uh, big garden, so she spent lots of time and lots of money uh, toward our product. We have also this kind of customer, which is uh, Philippe, for example, um, is a new uh, retiree. And uh, what is very interesting with this kind of consumer is that he's now reviewing his retire re retirement plan because uh, he now have a uh, eco conception of what he, he buy from the garden industry. So he, he now have a, a new look uh, onto our, our industry. But we also have this kind of consumer uh, who has been, for example, and wants a very nice house, but uh, he doesn't want to spend lots of money on it. So he always look after very cheap products, um, which is not very interesting uh, for, for the global industry. And uh, we still have 13% uh, of this consumer in the, in the market. So we have to be very careful with this uh, consumer. Um, so just to sum up, we have here 12 different kind of uh, customers they are very all different from each other but there is one point to remember that there is a very huge gap between generations and now the younger ones are the most strategic for our industry so how we can work with them i'm going to show you a few trends only a few uh, insights for example for theo uh, it looks for a very uh, very natural uh, product as i to as i told you um, and she is in sick of uh, nature, in sick of uh, bucolic uh, style. So that's why in the plant varieties, for example, we we see here lots of very uh, natural like plants uh, or natural plants we always use in the agriculture, for example, like uh, Phacelia, for example, or like uh, Trifolium repens, the white uh, Trifolium, white clover. So it can be very uh, cheap and very simple uh, varieties to, to provide, but uh, this kind of consumer is now in, uh, in seek for this kind of uh, varieties. We also have to consider that for the, the horticulture, we now need to maybe have a um, simple variety, very uh, natural-like varieties. Because um, we can see in this uh, kind of trend board, this kind of uh, consumer wants to have uh, like an off the grid um, way of life. So that means a, a, a kind of digital detox. He wants to uh, get off the all the wholesome and bustle of the city and uh, wants to find uh, himself into uh, the nature. So that's why we have lots of very uh, natural like uh, products. It can be uh, taken from uh, different inspiration from, for example, here, the ready to wear for uh, the children uh, industry. We have also this kind of style in the um, furniture industry for the outdoor uh, market. And you can see here a few, uh, few insights. For example, on the, the top of the screen here, we have Brian, uh, which is a very famous uh, photographer in New York City. And um, you can see his channel on YouTube, for example. And uh, for now, th uh, three, yes, three years, uh, he moved uh, in, the, in the countryside. He has opened a big ranch. He has his own uh, vegetable garden, for example. And he's now um, doing his life with uh, lots of uh, gardening, lots of uh, uh, vegetable uh, gardening. Uh, he spent uh, 
most of the time uh, next to uh, inside the, the nature and uh, when he speak about plants about the, the flower he wants in his garden he always speak about very uh, natural plant very uh, uh, yes very simple uh, plant so that's why we have put here a few uh, Dandinger varieties uh, that can uh, meet these consumer uh, aims and as a plant grower you should now take into account that your customers your yeah your customers are going to ask for more and more varieties with a natural style um, such as uh, garden roses for example for the cut flower industry or bush roses instead of the hybrid tea uh, we we used to used to have uh, as a, the leader of the market now uh, for example it is the beginning of a, a phenomenon but which is which will be concretely uh, reflected uh, in sales in the years to come because these kind of people are more and more numerous inside the, the global market. So we have, uh, for example, uh, new colors like the khaki, which is very, very important in the garden industry because it's quite a, a new color for now five years, but it's still uh, very huge and it's increasing uh, uh, in the market. So you can see here in this trend board, we, we can have the khaki color on inside the global, uh, the outdoor furniture, for example. We can have it, uh, on, the, um, on the painting, for example, uh, inside the, the garden uh, shed. We can have it on the foliage, which is very, very simple to, to use in the garden industry. So the khaki color is, um, is very influential now in the global trends for the garden industry and we also have this uh, gentle former style so that means for the new uh, new people new uh, um, new inhabitants of the countryside they don't want to live in the agricultural world they don't want to to see uh, trucks for example in the fields they they want to have this uh, uh, inspiration taken from uh, agriculture and uh, farming uh, taken from uh, um, the year 30 to uh, 60 for example but no more than, than 70 when the agricultural system become uh, industrialized um, so that means they look like very uh, simple plants simple uh, varieties uh, we can uh, provide them with uh, digitalis for example because uh, they, they find this kind of plant very uh, natural very simple uh, and authentic so when they move to the country they think about this kind of uh, of plants of kind of tools very uh, simple with a uh, laser with uh, metal for example but not a single touch of plastic in this trend board we have another consideration to make is uh, that new this new consumer uh, wants an alter living life alter living consumption and is more focused uh, on for example uh, vegetable plants vegetable gardens uh, fruits for example um, and we can see here very simple varieties like uh, scabiosa for example because uh, scabiosa can be sold as a uh, bee catching plants uh, bee uh, appealing plants uh, we have very simple plants like uh, beta vulgaris for example uh, which is uh, always on the top cover on the vegetable garden books for example so this is a, a very inter interesting point to, uh, to consider um, the simplicity for example of materials like uh, terracotta uh, that can be used uh, in the global industry in um, in uh, association with very um, brown plant brown foliage uh, you can see here on the on the trend board um, so this kind of uh, link between materials and plant can be easily made for example here we have a trend board uh, toward the hay uh, and we also have a very huge trend towards uh, dry flowers for example in the flower cut flower industry so maybe we can put a link uh, with uh, this kind of very uh, light colors uh, shrubs or trees or perennials uh, in the in the gardens um, to appeal this new kind of uh, consumer because he wants to find his uh, his own true self so that means we have lots of very uh, pure natural simple materials uh, uh, and is often linked 
with very light color so that's why i have put here the lots of uh, white uh, light light flower we also have a very huge subject uh, towards the bees uh, which is uh, obvious for our industry so it's so obvious we can use it for our businesses so by providing for example here yellow colors uh, flowers but also uh, uh, be be uh, be friendly uh, flowers like uh, sunflowers for example which is a, a very big success which has been a very big success this year and will be again big success in the future and we also have uh, uh, natural colors for example uh, stage color uh, and here it's not uh, just into uh, the fashion into the car industry into the makeup industry into the perfume industry it's quite of everywhere uh, you will see more and more this kind of colors the khaki the stage color uh, so very uh, natural greens um, and it's quite easy to use them in our industry because we have lots of flower uh, like this but for a timeless consumer a consumer who wants to uh, uh, to have plants and uh, and and uh, gardens uh, outside of the trends because he wants to this garden to last uh, uh, maybe uh, for ages uh, we have this kind of trend for example with a very uh, beige color here for example which is linked to materials we use a lot in the landscape industry or other color like blue one for example and we also see that this kind of consumer is uh, interesting by the precious woods so that's why we've put a link here between a very dark brown uh, colors of uh, foliage and flowers and the dark brown wood we can find in inside the house and outside the house on the terrace for example and this kind of link can be made pretty much uh, everywhere uh, here for example for uh, for uh, 2024 we will have this uh, this trend towards the uh, aluminum foil uh, uh, finish finish so we can put a link between uh, this kind of finish onto global market and towards the plant industry with this kind of this these varieties of uh, begonias for example so there is one big point to remember now uh, for the young consumer and main, mainly the, the main consumer, the mainly strategical consumer, a strong need of authenticity and natural varieties. And it's very huge because uh, the average garden is growing now uh, everywhere in the world uh, due to the pandemic and the lockdown, as I told you sooner, uh, we have now um, urban exodus phenomenon which is quite everywhere here you can see the chart of uh, new york city for example lots of people um, have changed their life and now live in the countryside of uh, new york city and it's quite everywhere in the world like i guess you can uh, all see it uh, in your country people are moving from a big city and uh, they are now settling their family into the countryside so that means tomorrow uh, they will need uh, more authenticity, they will need more local products. So obviously you can always buy uh, breeds and uh, crops from everywhere in the world, but the final production needs to be made, let's say, uh, 50 kilometers from the consumer home uh, to be more efficient for the global uh, market. And we each year gain new uh, consumer and a wider garden uh, so that means it's very very strategical for industry so as a conclusion I, I can always say that Sorry. I just say that um, it's very optimistic because uh, for the, the global market um, we will gain lots of new customers uh, lots of new consumers because younger generation are now um, quite moving to the countryside they have bigger gardens they have uh, a better vision of our market of our products so it's quite interesting and very strategical for our industry so thank you for your attention and now let's see what uh, we can do together on the social media with michael Oh my gosh, that was incredibly interesting. Thank you so much, Manuel. That I could have listened to that all day. I'm just blown away that you're understanding all the demographics so well as well. And obviously, we're talking about 46% millennials, and that is so different to when I was a child. And you know, nobody young was interested in gardening then. And you've really recognized kind of what those different demographics are interested in. And I love the concept 
of the lazy shopper with money. <laughs> because you've related all of those different demographics to kind of how we can approach them in a retail way and financially as well, which is really brilliant. And on a lighter note, I really like your sage purified and your beekeeping colors as well. I did some work with Danziger last year, which you'll see on my social media, and we earmarked the Crespedia golf ball and the Petunia Hello Yellow as being yellow colors for this trend. So I think kind of we're in tune with that trend there, Manuel. 